Thanks for sticking around, everybody. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Kim Cho. I'm from New Zealand. And this is me at the age of two and a half, learning how to bake using Play-Doh. Now, I'm sure that many of you in this room have similar experiences and similar memories of when you first learned to cook. Or perhaps you have a favorite recipe that's been in your family for generations. The problem is that a lot of these memories, these recipes, these stories, they're not being well recorded. We're missing a huge opportunity to record and share these, to share uh, not only with future generations, but also with the people who are around us today. So that's why I've created Kitchen Chapters. It's a digital storytelling project that takes you inside the uh, kitchens of people all over the world and tells you their stories through a medium that we can all relate to, and that's food. Uh, we are online through written stories, videos, and photos. We're going to eventually develop to become a platform where we encourage people to share their own stories with us as well. But also, crucially, we are an offline community. We will be running events such as cooking demonstrations, uh, food festivals, um, and hopefully facilitating um, people to go into each other's homes and share meals uh, sometime in the future. So at the moment, we are publishing around once a week. I have been uh, running all over New York City, visiting people from um, vastly different communities. Uh, this is just a screenshot from a video I made with a Ghanaian woman in the Bronx called um, Barbara. Now, I turned up to her house. I'd never met her before. And I said to her, you know, what are we cooking? She said, you're going to be here for a while. I've got the stew to make you. And there's no such thing as fast food in Ghana. So I spent a really delightful two hours with her. Um, learning all about how to make this really, really delicious stew. Now, we know that there is a huge appetite out there, if you'll excuse the pun, uh, for food media. Uh, a survey done by the blog Her Media Network found that uh, of all the people in the United States who are connected to the internet, nearly a whopping 90% of them search for recipes online. And significant portions of them also read food blogs and share photos of their food online. Um, so it's a huge captive audience for us. Now, I'm from New Zealand, so I'm going to be taking this project and running it from my home city of Auckland in a few weeks. Um, but we see no reason why kitchen captives can't be a global thing, because you know, food is a global currency, um, and there are loads of stories to be told everywhere. And thankfully, uh, the digital sphere allows us to do that. So we're across a number of social media platforms. We haven't done a lot so far in terms of marketing, uh, but you can find us uh, anywhere on the internet, basically. Um, and we are also um, running a weekly newsletter. So um, I really enjoy reading great food writing from around the web. So I've been curating that and sending that out to people who are interested. As I mentioned earlier, events is going to be a huge part of our revenue model. We're going to start off small running cooking demonstrations and storytelling events. Um, and as we grow our team, which is currently just me, uh, we will be looking to grow those events, make them more frequent in more locations um, and capturing more people. Uh, obviously, advertising is going to be a part of our site. We'll be looking into crowdfunding. And we run a bookstore as well. So we've got affiliate uh, programs set up with Amazon and the book depository. We think that Kitchen Chapters is unique in the market because of its focus on really personal, kind of ordinary but extraordinary stories in a way. Um, I've been a journalist in New Zealand for a while, so I've got um, good connections there in terms of helping to spread the word and get more people on board. So we'll be looking to launch our first event in Auckland in September this year. Uh, the big thing for us, however, is starting to look into how to build this platform for encouraging people to contribute to our site. We want to find a way to make it easy for people to share their stories uh, and then distribute them from there. So um, I'm really interested in looking for people who are um, wanting to distribute our content. If you've got stories that you'd like to tell through our site, then I'd love to talk to you as well. Um, this is where you can contact me and um, let's tell some more of the world's delicious stories. Kim, questions for Kim before we get the rest of the group back up? OK, so I'd like to invite the final group back up to the podium for final questions for this last group. Uh, and I'd reiterate what Kim said. Thank you guys for sticking around. I know it's a long night. We've got a lot of fellows. I hope you've enjoyed it. And we'd love to hear your, your questions for this last group. Just put your hand up if you've got a question for any of the 
Yep, over there. Hello? Oh. Um, I had a question for Ilan. Um, I thought it was a great idea, and it's often something I think about, like stories must still be going on after journalists leave. So I wondered from your perspective or from Coda's, Coda's perspective, when do the stories end? Because potentially things like the Fukushima... Oh, right, that's, that's an important um, yeah. detail. <laughs> Five to six months. Five to six months, which uh, in, in, in a way is arbitrary. We just picked it. But um, it's also our sense that that's um, about the right time to really explore the aftermath of a crisis um, without... We just can't go on forever. So um, that's, that's the time we picked. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, good question. Other questions, other or comments, thoughts? This is a question for Anna. Uh, it seemed like a really great idea, great presentation too. Um, the I know that the IAB has been looking to sort of build uh, some consensus and some terminology and sort of set some ground rules for the podcasting space. Are you trying to sort of set your own standardized metrics that would exist independent of that, or are you just sort of building something that's a stopgap until they launch their own? Yeah, thank you for the question, because we are really thinking a lot about it, and uh, one of the really problems that we see is there is a lack of, stand of, of standardized metrics. So really, one of the things that we need the money is to build a platform. Our goal is to uh, aggregate metrics from all the platforms and make it clear to give a direct entry to the sponsors. I mean, we just want to give to the sponsors very clear KPIs. So that's our goal, really. Thanks. Any of the fellows up here? Any last questions? So I just want to say one last congratulations to the, all of the fellows who presented tonight. Really great, excellent work. And I'd encourage you, you have everyone's contact information, their Twitter accounts, their email addresses in your program. So please do get in touch with them if you're interested in following up in any way. Um, I'm sure each of them would love to hear from you. And if you have any, any feedback on the program overall or interest in the program, um, please get in touch with me. I'll stick around afterwards um, if people want to chat or, or email me. Um, and thank you for coming. Thanks a lot. Thank you.